Hi guys, this is Pam, Flower Patch Farmhouse, and today I'm going to show you how I layer a clematis to root it, to propagate it. And this is the base of the clematis. I did a post on last fall, and it was called uh, Prune Your Cl Clematis for Top to Bottom Bloom. And it was how to renovate a clematis that may be just blooming all at the top and at the base it's kind of bare. And you will know, let me see if I can zoom in for you, that here at the base I have tons of new growth. Um, so that means there are going to be blooms down here. There's even some blooms right there. But there is one strand or vine right here coming from the base. And that's going to be what I use to uh, layer, to propagate. Now, if you notice, I have a pot here. And then a little further out, I have another pot over there. And I'm going to cut this part, or I should say put a slice in this part. Let me put it under the white so you can see it. I'm going to put a slice right here in the vine. And uh, with clematis, they are internodal rooters. And that means instead of a lot of plants will root here at a leaf juncture, but clematis, it's between leaf junctures. So that's where we're gonna make our split. A knife, a sharp knife that I do this with. And I will show you how I cut. And you have to be careful with clematis because they can be very brittle and snap, but I'm gonna cut a nice slice right into the stem. Now let me move over there where I can get at it easier. Oop, that was my little bottle of rooting hormone. Now I'm just gonna pour a dab I should have grabbed a paintbrush or a Q-tip to do this. But now that I've lost my little split, okay, I'm just gonna pour it over where the split should be since I can't see it right now. Let me look, ah, there it is. Now what you wanna do also is, you can use a toothpick, but I have some pine needles here. I'm just gonna run it through the split to hold it apart a bit because uh, the theory is that it will close back together and um, heal up without rooting. See, I have the pine needle in there and dig out some of the soil. I'm going to press it down into the soil and cover the spot that um, was split on the, the uh, vine. Now um, you will weight that down. Some people use pins to weight it down in there so it doesn't pop up when it's dry. I'll use a small stone and then I'm just be very careful. This is a spot that um, is protected and I can come in here and watch for any um, problems and keep an eye on it. Now you can try to do it with the older part of the vine. But that supposedly takes longer than the new spring growth. This is just growth this spring. And let me get that in. All right. Now we'll do this one. This is a lily that I don't want to harm. So I will do this a little differently. This is another part of the spring growth. I, got, I don't wanna pull that piece up and I need to have my, so here's a leaf node and here's a leaf node. And there's one, let's see, which one should I, I'm gonna go between these two and I'm gonna slice it with my knife and I'm gonna hold that there so I don't lose my spot. And I have plenty of pine needles around here so I'm gonna grab a pine needle off the stem and I'm gonna slide it right in there. And I will put a little rooting hormone on there. 
as I said, I usually use a Q-tip or a paintbrush, but I didn't have one handy, so this works just fine. And there we're gonna stick that in the soil. We're gonna cover it with more soil. And then I'll weight it down with a stone like I did the other one. It doesn't have to be a big stone. And then you'll notice whether it dies or if it continues to grow. And um, it can take maybe all of the summer to actually root. But um, this will be, like I said, a protected area that I watch closely. And I am gonna mulch around my clematis, the, the parent clematis, to keep the roots cool. See here is the roots. In this whole area, will I'll plant either a short growing uh, annual or I will mulch it real heavy to keep the roots cool because this gets a hot sun in midsummer.